The Lacewing Budgie This variety is one of the more interesting ones and that's because of its genetic combination. I know a lot of you are here to learn about the appearance of Lacewing Budgie so when you see one you can identify it. We will discuss the appearance of a lacewing budgie and what to look for in order to recognize it. However, even if you are here just for the appearance, I really encourage you to stick to the end of the video and learn the genetics behind this mutation because it is really interesting not only for you to be able to breed it but also to see how amazing the genetics are behind this mutation. The genetics might be complicated at first but I will try to simplify it and it should be very clear to you and actually pretty interesting one. Special thanks to some of you who have sent me some videos and pictures of this interesting mutation so I can teach you all about it. Let's start like we always do, the appearance of a lacewing budgie. First thing you need to look for is red eyes. All lacewing budgies have red eyes. Then you need to see a totally yellow or totally white budgie, except with bright brown markings on their cheek spots, wings and tail. Their feet and sear are flesh pinkish color and their beaks are orange. Wait, let's review for one second. We said their eyes are red and their body color is almost non-existent. That means we are talking about an Inobaji. And when we said brown markings, isn't that a cinnamon budgie? Well, the brown markings are paler than those of a cinnamon budgie, but still, what does that even mean? This mutation is actually the combination of Inu and cinnamon budgie. But wait, didn't we say the Inu budgie masks all other mutations, like in the documentary about budgie colors, or in the Inu variety video? That's why I said the variety genetics are very interesting. But before we cover them, let's see how to differentiate between males and females in this mutation. Since this mutation is a combination of Inu and Cinnamon varieties, that means their feet has to be pink flesh color, since both Inu and Cinnamon mutations have pink feet. Also, the beak is orange because both mutations have orange beak. As for the seer color, in this mutation, the males carry their pink purple color seer to their adulthood, and females white, pale blue or brown. I believe it is easier to differentiate between males and females in this mutation than in the Inu mutation. Maybe it is because the combination with the cinnamon mutation. Now let's go to the interesting part of this mutation, the genetics. It might be a bit complicated, but don't worry. I will really simplify it as much as I can and I promise you when you understand it, it will be very clear to you and you can actually understand this mutation clearly. In fact, understanding this mutation will help you to understand other more complicated mutations like the yellow and golden face mutations. As we discussed before, the genes are in the DNA and there is a subunit called the chromatid where the gene allele is found. The cinnamon and Inu genes are really close to one another. That's why, before 1979, they thought that lacewing variety was a different form of mutation, until proven that it is not a different mutation, rather it is the combination of cinnamon and Inu mutations. And the way they proved it was by breeding an Inu budgie with cinnamon budgie, and they had lacewing offspring. And the reason behind that, although the energy masks the other mutations because it prevents the work of melanin as we have discussed in previous videos, however, it doesn't mask the cinnamon gene. So when two parents, one being cinnamon and one being inu, bred together, instead of having 50% inu offspring and 50% cinnamon offspring, we actually got 48% cinnamon. 48% Inu, 2% Lacewing and 2% Normal Offspring. 
Why is that though? Well, since both cinnamon and inno are sex-linked mutations, that means this mutation is sex-linked mutation as well. Now why we don't get 50% cinnamon and 50% inno offspring? Well, that's because some of the offspring will inherit both cinnamon and inno gene. And the reasoning behind that is because of their close proximity to one another. Of course, that only happens with males, since males have two X's. One will have the inogene and the other will have the cinnamon gene, and we get a lacewing male. And the other 2% of normal females, because in females, if you remember, from sex syncretation, they either have it or not. So if they don't have inno or cinnamon, they will be normal. This is called type 2 lacewing and it is only visible in males because of the reasons we just discussed. You can't find a type 2 lacewing female because she can't have two X's, one being inno and the other being cinnamon. With that being said, there is a type 1 lacewing which can occur in both males and females. And that's because, as we have said before, these two genes are really close to one another, and you can call it an accident if you wish, but sometimes the chick inherits both genes on the same allele, and that's why this mutation symbol is sin slash inno, which refers to both inno and cinnamon mutations. And since these mutations can slide one next to the other and get inherited together, then we can have lacewing females and we can have a normal male that is carrying the lacewing gene, like in any other recessive sex link mutation. Of course, this gene is recessive since it is the combination of two recessive genes, the inno and cinnamon. And now we can look at the Punnett square and understand it even more. Let's have a look at type 1 lacewing, which is when the two genes are being inherited together. And the reason we are going to talk about type 1 rather than type 2, because type 2 can only occur in males, and when breeding inu with cinnamon budgie parents, you only get 2% chance of lacewing from their offspring. So it is not that reliable in breeding terms. Back to type 1 lacewing punnett square, let's take a normal male that is carrying the lacewing gene on one of his X's, and let's take a normal female. If we put them together in the punnett square, we will see that 25% of the males are normal carriers, 25% normal males, 25% lacewing females and 25% normal females, right? Well, it is true kind of. You see, you can calculate it this way and rely on the Punnett square as we do in other mutations, but this mutation is a little bit tricky. While we should have 50% normal males, 25% normal females and only 25% lacewing females, but in reality, some females might be born inos and some females might be born cinnamon. That's due to the genetical complications that happen with this mutation. But we are talking about 1 or 2% of the offspring, so it is kind of rare, I mean really rare, but it could happen. So if we breed lacewing male with lacewing female, you will most likely have 100% of your offspring lacewing chicks. However, if you end up with 1 or 2 inos or cinnamons, you know that this could happen, and you don't need to freak out, just like if you breed inno with cinnamon parents you have a slight chance of having a lacewing offspring, well 1 or 2%, but it still could happen. Actually that's the beauty of genetics, and that's how mutations are born. For more about budgies, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are watching this video from YouTube and hit the bell icon to get notified when the next video is up. Or like the Facebook page if you are watching this video from Facebook.